I quote, an injury is not just a process of recovery, it is a process of discovery, unquote, by Conor McGregor. A very good evening to parents, students, and all our well-wishers who have joined us for today's webinar on sports injuries, care, and management. In the words of Ernest Holmes, prayer is a thought, a belief or feeling arising within the mind of the one praying. I invite Miss Agnes to lead us in prayer. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of life and all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. This day, we come before you in awe of your wonder with thanksgiving and praises in our hearts. We ask you to extend your divine wisdom on our speakers as they share effectively God's given knowledge with all of us. May we be living witnesses of your genuine love through the implementation of the knowledge acquired from this webinar. Grant us with your patience as we believe that you are the God that heals our sicknesses and gives strength in these challenging times. We entrust our prayers in your divine love. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Agnes. Leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. It is lifting a person's vision to high sights, raising a person's performance to a higher standard and the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. These very qualities are what define our principal, Reverend Father Sunil Fernandez SG. I invite Father to address the gathering. A warm welcome to all who are gathered here today. St. Joseph's is a sporting school and one has to look no further than the list of our illustrious alumni who once played on the grounds of their alma mater before they became international sporting legends. We hope to resume our regular sports activities as soon as things normalize and I'm sure everyone is looking forward to it. In the last year and a half, many people have found it difficult, if not impossible, to resume their usual physical activities. But as normal life opens up, we are back playing our favorite sports. At such a time, paying heed to injuries is most critical. Nobody would like to land up in hospital today and expose themselves when they can instead take care. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, said Benjamin Franklin. The Dutch philosopher Erasmus is also known for a similar saying, prevention is better than cure. I love the suffering that goes into the sport to become the best, said the American cyclist T.J. Eisenhardt. His words ring true with regard to the amount of sacrifice and pain that a sportsperson goes through to reach the top. However, in the process of preparing to excel in one sport, every sportsperson runs the risk of suffering an injury or trauma, and that definitely is something of great concern which must be addressed immediately so as to not cause permanent damage and ruin his or her career. The five S's of sports training are stamina, speed, strength, skill and spirit. Sporting injuries should definitely not be one of them. This is a very important topic and of crucial importance and interest to all for the care and management of such injuries is vital. We have some very accomplished doctors who have graciously accepted to be a part of this webinar today. The speakers today, Dr. Rajkumar Amravati, Head, Division of Orthoscopy and Sports Surgery, and Dr. Padmanabhan Shekhar, Specialist in Movement Analysis for Injury Prevention, will enlighten us about the possible risks as well as the care and management that is needed. I extend a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Rajkumar Amravati, and Dr. Padmanabhan Shekharan, 
I look forward to listening to you. I once again welcome you all to this enriching webinar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Father Sunil. Sporting activity of any kind is an excellent way to enhance fitness and health. Participating in sports not only improves your physical health by improving coordination, balance, and flexibility, but it also boosts endurance and gives you a sense of well-being. Sports provides opportunity to experience both the highs and lows of winning and losing. It is a meeting ground for people with similar interests. It encourages setting and achieving of goals through healthy competition. However, given all these advantages, sports-related injury is still a good possibility. Dr. Rajkumar and Dr. Padmanabhan are here with us today to tell us how best we can care for and treat sports-related injuries. I invite Ms. Diane to introduce our speakers for today. Good evening to one and all. It is a great pleasure to introduce our illustrious speaker, Dr. Rajkumar S. Amaravati, who has completed his MBBS from Karnataka Medical College and went on to do his DNB Ortho from New Delhi. Having pursued FRCS at the RCPS Glasgow, he went on to complete two fellowships from the FIFA Center of Medical Excellence from Portugal and another in advanced soldier surgery from France. After years of successful medical practice in the UK, he returned to India and is presently a professor in orthopedic surgery at St. John's Medical College Hospital, Bangalore. Dr. Rajkumar is a proud recipient of over 30 awards, which include state, national, and international awards. A feather in Dr. Rajkumar's cap is that he has won accolades both in India and abroad for having written and published research papers. Beside this, he has completed more than 10 clinical research projects and he's currently working on four new projects. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much uh, for having me and my colleague Padmanabhan to share our uh, thoughts on sports injuries, preventing it and managing it. My charge today would be to speak on uh, safe play and uh, injury risk mitigation in sports injuries. The most common injuries that we see are sports specific. Hamstring injuries are more common in uh, runners and uh, soccer and rugby playing, whereas the adductors in the rectus femur is again a common in the rugby players. Tennis players are more common to have gastronomias or abdominal muscle injuries. When do they sustain these injuries and is there a bailout? They sustain these injuries when there is eccentric muscle load and also in the transitional phase where there is both eccentric and concentric loading. More to it will be spoken to my erstwhile colleague, Mr. Padmanabha. Is there a bailout for these injuries? Yes, there is. You can improve load tolerance of the muscle, optimize the neuromuscular function by stretching and flexibility, improve strength deficits in the muscle groups, especially in the hamstrings and the quadriceps ratio. You can also work on the intramuscular coordination of muscle groups to avoid such injuries. The new concept that is there in the market is to put the core to work 
and make it stable and what is the concept of doing such a core stability the concept is to provide a stable base so that the leg can, leg can propel you further and increase the output of any function of the upper limb it also reduces unphysiological movement between the uh, spine pelvis as well as the hip for example if anybody has to squat if he just work on the leg strength the output will be only 75 7.5% but if you work on the core as well as the leg muscle strength the output is nearly doubled similarly if you have a very flabby abdomen or if the spine is hyperlordotic we are more prone to have hamstring injuries this core stability also helps us in reducing the injuries <clears throat> how to optimize basic fitness to optimize basic fitness we need to work on endurance we also need to work on coordination between muscle groups as i alluded earlier we also have to work on stretching and tape certain muscle groups to prevent injuries we need to have proper gear and also wear certain kind of braces when we are running for long distance the surface on which we perform an athletic activity should be kept in mind also the climate which we you know generally take part in what is the role of a team physician the team physician provides professional standard of care he also is mindful of the good samaritan laws that govern the rules of the sports he does a thorough pre participation examination of the athlete also he follows fit principle which in full form means he keeps in touch with the frequency the timing of the training of an athlete and how we should go about Uh, spacing is training and return to play should be kept in mind whenever the player is injured a thorough ppe form should be there handy for all sporting professionals who practice in institutions as well as in sports setting where they handle athletes day in and day out which should enlist basic um vital signs of the patient like the blood pressure the heart rate the respiratory rate and so on and so forth but most importantly it should record the cardiac activity the respiratory activity and all other extremity functions of the individual once all these is thoroughly checked up then only the team physician can clear an athlete to play a game or to restrict him from playing based on what he finds we all are very aware of this injury that we saw in euro 2021 we saw erickson in spite of having a full clearance from the ppe form he ended up having a cardiac event so there are untoward events that can happen which are not under our control but nevertheless we need to keep this form handy so that we at all point of time clear that lead to play we also need to follow certain rules when we um, plan a training for an athlete the training period generally if it lasts for an over a month it is broken down into a pre season activity a competitive activity as well as a post season activity and the pre season activity is the longest one wherein more intense training is done competitive phase is where we maintain whatever he has learned in the pre season and try to prevent injuries in that season and post season is generally a rewind and relaxation phase wherein we give some amount of room for the athlete to go back and be with his near and dear one so that he can come back stronger again when the season starts having said that his training should be a mix of both aerobic and anaerobic exercises plyometrics weight training as well as techniques to improve his output in any particular kind of a game keeping in mind the competition which the athlete is going to participate prehab as me and my colleague always have hop down is very important to increase the output of an athlete in any game we just keep it very simple 
we need to do cross training rather than doing any any one particular game when we are participating in an event we need to work on the core and the cardio should be optimum when we are um, trying to clear an athlete to play a particular kind of a game why we should do that our aim is to improve flexibility strength and endurance and this man on the screen for you mr usain bolt is just not there by chance he has adhered to all the principles of rehab prehab and all the training that he has undergone is to optimize his outcome and that is why he is a he is an athlete par excellence we all know that throwing athletes also do sustain amount of certain kind of injuries especially the injuries sustained are in the upper limb the core as well as in lower limb we need to find out what is the culprit in such an event we need to know whether his core is stable or not we also should work on the muscle memory of the individual the two athletes that are there on the slides here for your reference the one guy won the gold medal for you in your country in javelin as well as the speedster who bowls yorker length balls for everybody's amaze these guys do sustain injuries and they have been treated and they have been put back because their injuries have been identified and treated when we run in the initial phase of the running as well as when we are winding up we are always prone for injuries also it depends on what kind of footwear we wear and what kind of surface we run whether we run barefoot whether we put spikes and we run whether we use a special kind of footwear just to support and reduce the angle between the heel and the ankle to reduce the injuries to the running foot as well as the back there are some point of uh, running and uh, walking areas wherein there won't be any contact of the feet to the ground we sometimes call it as a double float or sometimes we call it as double support walking swimming is another area wherein the shoulder the core and the knee are all injured if we keep our body in shape we will be able to prevent these kind of injuries there are four specific events the breast stroke the back stroke and the butterfly stroke and the freestyle in all these injury all these event the shoulder injuries do occur which is generally an impingement and if we take care of the shoulder uh, kinematics which uh, padmanabhan will allude to we will be avoiding such injuries even when we jump and land any sport which involves jumping and landing still can prone uh, still can make an athlete to have injuries that is basically because of the difference in the quadriceps and the hamstring ratio the difference in the hip rotation and the abduction and if you follow poor technique each individual will be prone to have injury we are aware that carolyn marin could not participate in the olympics because of a knee injury and which was very severe and here we see two high jump athletes one of them from italy and another from qatar both high level high jumpers both shared the gold one of them an italian athlete has an injury to the ankle post injury he has recovered well to participate so we need to address such injuries make them fit make them play at the highest level doping is another area which each athlete should not do what is doping if i have to say it is a substance or a method used to increase performance which is detrimental to the health and ethics of any game there are many things available in the market to boost your performance to improve your output on the field steroids are available diuretics which are masking agents stimulants just for the sake of uh, having a better day on field supplements to boost your um, muscle uh, function 
blood products to improve your improve your oxygen carrying capacity and sometimes growth hormone to stimulate your muscle groups all these will improve your output or playing in a particular day or a particular game but once you are caught the disgrace that you have is beyond repair so this is a one area where any athlete should not venture into we have great news for women in sports in our country they are doing really well but there are three things that usually bother a woman athlete and we call it as a triad of an athlete they are generally prone for inadequate eating or sometimes retching and vomiting they will usually be prone for menstrual abnormalities and sometimes they will have skeletal demineralization these all will require a multi pronged approach usually involving a nutritionist usually involving a psychologist a gynecologist and also an endocrinologist to supplement the need for calcium to support the demineralization of the bone pediatric and adolescent athletes we should remember three a's in this age group because they are young they are more prone for abuse we all know what happened to the gymnasts in america and these injuries are generally seen where the muscle and the tendons are attached to the bone and we call it as an apophyseal or an epiphyseal injuries people who are crippled who are bound to the wheelchair also have brought great laurels to our country but only thing is if we provide them much better equipment and in design they can bring greater laurels we also should be mindful of the quality of the bone they have because they are more prone from uh, osteoporosis if they are paralytic we need to regulate their temperature of the body sometimes sitting for long time in one particular position on a wheelchair will throw in some amount of new calcification in the bones and around the joints restricting their mobility pressure source should be kept in mind and once we are able to treat them they will be functioning like you and me to bring great laurels to the country and here is one of our power lifter parman whom i have operated and me and padmanabhan together have made his life really enterprising there are some changes in sporting arena of the world i am going to speak on some few of them that help us to participate in a sport effectively mouth guards is a must for any contact sports which will prevent you from facial maxillary injury if you have to look at the lat ankle sprains which are very common what are the criterias that help them to participate at the highest level is if you take care of the pain and the functional stability of the joint they should be able to participate even if there is some amount of swelling and discomfort in the joint we were talking about uh, stimulants that people use uh, to improve or reduce the musculoskeletal injury reduce their cramping and dehydration there are recommendations made at international level it should not be done by children less than 18 years of age and above 18 years the recommended dose of any supplement for example creatine is 0.3 grams per kg per day high energy performance athletes should take supplements but it should be supervised what about girls who in more indulge in sports and sports which have got heavy contact and especially game like an ice hockey females have knowledge and they are better equipped to play such a game but if they are more aggressive they will be having more injuries safe play is the norm to avoid injuries an experienced player will be better placed to avoid injury 
can a non experienced player says this paper rugby is in the blood of people in new zealand and the black caps are one of the prominent teams in the world that play rugby day in and day out like we play cricket but in their national program they have devised something called as a rugby smart program which before 2000 if you see they had a phenomenal number of injuries involving their athletes but after 2000 we can see a dip in the incidence of the injuries because they follow something called as a rugby smart which involves basic uh, steps to keep your bodies and eye coordination appropriate how to prevent injuries in young athletes who practice ice hockey young athletes generally have injuries during competitions and especially they are seen in boys do we have a bailout in such situation for these young athletes yes we have sometimes because the nature of the game is such there is lot of body checking the age at which body checking is done is advanced from 13 years to 15 years age group that means body checking is allowed only beyond 15 years and not before 15 years they work on the core of the patient they have devised new gears and their proper usage to reduce the amount of injury in such situations also a cramped playing area is increased and the size of the area is to play is increased so as to reduce the amount of injury seen in young individuals the baseball which is played day in day out in us japan and world over is also participate is a game that the youths are more fascinated about but mind you if they don't practice good technique and they use curve balls regularly they will be prone for injuries they should not pitch more than 80 in a particular match and their pitching should be restricted only up to 8 months to avoid injuries especially of the upper limb they can be either a pitcher or a catcher not both to reduce the incidence of injuries in the upper limb if the team physician notices that there is a reduction in the velocity of pitching he should be uh, taken care of and if he is injured a four month period of rest is required to return to play when he is fit now in a youth or in a college when they are playing games they are also prone for knee injuries and knee ligament injuries are the most commonest that we see in our practice here in our institution in this paper which says that the medial collateral ligament injury and anterior cruciate ligament injuries were the most commonest ligament injuries that are seen in an athlete who practices american football we see football being played not only by boys girls are also now actively participating in football and our country is also proud to send our women team participating in state national events and these girls or the ladies are also prone for ankle and foot injuries especially the defenders if they are more aggressive they will be prone for injuries it has been found that if they participate more on grass they are more prone for injuries than when they participate on an artificial turf in the amount of footwear they wear in the form of cleats will make them more prone for injuries if we avoid such kind of uh, situations uh, our female athletes also can avoid having injuries this is the most important thing that i want to bring across to the parents who are um, wanting their wards to play for the country the state and be an athlete of repute here are two examples of athletes that i would be sh i am sharing with you one is aditya ashok who participated very eloquently and made our country proud 
in the first time event which was held in uh, japan the golfing event and you will see her mother always standing by her side acting like her caddy and giving her moral support whenever required another athlete is maria sharupova who is a well known renowned tennis player who played with great success throughout her career when her father was managing her career the day her father stopped managing her career she slipped down the line and she was caught when she was using medications which are not supposed to be used to enhance her performance performance so i would like to advise the parents watch your wards be mindful of their injuries be mindful of the requirements and bring to the notice of the team physician if there anything that is not right with your ward athletic pubalgia is a important uh, groin injury that any athlete who practices uh, kicking or soccer uh, is involved with it is a pain usually around the groin area and the athlete cannot participate and it's a very painful situation initially we will manage them with medications and sometimes they will end up having a, a surgical release of the rectus femoris and the adductor longus muscle which can be repaired and the patient can be rehabilitated successfully why we should be treating them or why we should be mindful of what kind of injuries each athlete will have because it influences the team in which they are playing if it is a team game or a missed playing time is not good for the psyche of the athlete as well as for his reputation and if the athlete continues to have a repeated injury he may have a chronic injury which will render him unplayable in certain situation so if you want to keep them happy we need to advise them on safe play we need to prevent injuries we need to provide them with uh, situations and surfaces and refer them to institutions where they can take care of such problems thank you very much and uh, i end my first talk here Uh, which is on safe play i will now share my second talk which is on managing uh, knee ligament injuries sorry can you see my new screen can you see my new screen yes sir yes yes doctor no it is opening the same one i
can you hear me yes doctor okay now we will be talking on the knee management knee injuries and its management um i'll just run through my slides here quickly because i have to give room for padmanabhan to speak we have seen injuries in our institution uh, both in male and female but the men usually predominated uh, this acl injuries in the time that we saw them but uh, if you see their lifestyle most of the lifestyle most of them were sedentary lifestyles but surprisingly none of them were aware that is 80% of the people were not aware that acl can injury can cause great damage to their knee two wheeler injuries were more common though we had our share of sporting injuries in the people now when we should uh, time an acl injury surgery or a repair and who should undergo acl repair any individual who is participating in pivoting sport or cutting in cutting uh, activity like soccer football basketball should be undergoing acl surgery there can be a non operative way of managing a person who is practicing only running in a straight line or swimming or if he partic is participating in weight lifting there is no need for such individual to undergo acl surgery now when do we time them what is the correct time to do the earlier the better is the dictum nowadays because if we delay acl surgery for a long period of time the collagen fibers will contract and the outcome of such a surgery is poor also additional injuries will develop in the knee and they may not uh, recover to the optimum which is required when only an acl injury is there most of the people who presented to us were late and their outcome was not that great when they present late if we present early to the uh, check up and treatment that is within 3 months the outcome of such a surgery will be good we all plan a prehab for all the individuals who are injured with uh, a knee injury the reason being we need to work on the good range of movement of the knee a good quadriceps function meaning a complete extension of the knee should be there which will influence the final outcome of an individual when we operate anybody with a contracture or a severe uh, angry knee or a swollen knee should not be subjected to surgery uh, in the early phases there are associated injuries when a cruciate ligament is injured the most commonest being the medial collateral ligament of the knee as well as the medial meniscus which is a cartilage which is there between the thigh bone and the leg bone clinical examination which is thoroughly done to pick up uh, not only acl injuries but additional injuries to optimize the outcome of managing an individual or an athlete with such an injury now many of us uh, have treated athletes of great repute as well as novices their question is what is the kind of graft that you are going to use the gold standard world over earlier was bone patella bone tendon graft followed by hamstring graft which is being done nowadays but again the bone patella bone tendon graft is coming back strongly so that an active athlete should always have a bone patella bone tendon graft than a soft tissue graft like hamstring what should be the minimum diameter of a graft that has to be used it should be at least 8 mm or beyond so that we have a good strength and a good collagen to support the unstable knee sometimes when the acl is torn part of the acl is still preserved which is very good to be like that because it has uh, neurotransmitters and it has pressure re receptors that will help the knee to recover well when we rehab the patient also there are two bundles in an acl if one of the bundle is intact we only reconstruct part of the bundle so that it provides additional stability uh, to the non injured ligament 
people ask what is new in uh, anterior cruciate ligament surgery i tell them it is the meniscal injuries that is new and not the acl injuries because the lateral meniscal root injuries as well as the ramp lesions which are seen behind the medial meniscus do influence the uh, in unstable knee uh, especially in uh, rotational movement so unless we pick up these injuries and uh, repair the knee is going to be unstable only if we treat the anterior cruciate ligament injury we also do additional procedures on the outside we call it as a lateral extra articular tenodesis because it provides um, more stability and brings the center of rotation to the uh, knee uh, rather than when we treat only an acl injury by acl reconstruction it also helps or gives time to acl uh, for the acl to heal um, when we are rehabilitating such a patient with acl injury the fibers that we reconstruct while uh, we are doing acl surgery are both uh, direct and indirect fibers because we are now moving uh, to the anatomical reconstruction that is proposed by our great friend and who has departed recently dr freddy fu who is the david silver professor from pittsburgh DBL tunnel has to be appropriate and it has to be dead center so that the uh, non anatomical placement of a tunnel should not influence the outcome of an acl surgery there are some people who come and ask us whether you are repairing the acl uh, torn acl or you are reconstructing the torn acl repair is an option if there is just a peel off of the ligament from the femoral attachment we can put sutures across the uh, torn acl and fix it with the help of a screw this is a new concept which is evolving uh, only time will tell that how best this kind of procedure do help in uh, bringing the patient back to playing fixation methods however don't influence uh, much how the acl surgery is done but having said that um we prefer to use screw on the tibia as well as an adjustable loop on the femoral side what about an individual who has got a deformity of the knee and he has got an acl injury those kind of individuals also can be managed by a different kind of a procedure where even the alignment of the limb is corrected by osteotomy and then an acl reconstruction can be done so as to optimize his uh, playing time if you understand the histology well and plan new procedures like using prp or using biofilms across the torn acl the biological value of retaining the normal tissue uh, is better than having a reconstructed acl if you have to see this new study by martha mary and her group uh, it is fascinating and encouraging in the initial phase of the science wherein they wrap the uh, torn acl with um, a biofilm of tissue which is made out of collagen and which enhances the healing and uh, shortens the period of uh, rehab for such an individual research is encouraging but we have to wait and watch how the outcome will be in long term what we do for the meniscus nowadays no meniscus is removed if it is torn each and every bit of meniscus if it is repairable is repaired and in areas where the augmentation of healing has to be done we also do use a fibrin clot to augment the repair of a particular meniscus also augmentation of acl by the available periosteum that covers the bone is being done in our institution which is given as great success in biological healing of a torn acl now how many of them will return when we do such a reconstruction or such a repair of a meniscus when we adhere to all the pre op intra op and post op uh, protocols and do 
and most appropriate job, only 65% of the patient will return to sport. But when we add a lateral extraarticular articular disease and do more biological than um, reconstructing job, uh, 85 to 90% of the individual will return to sport. But it is not only the way we do surgery, it is not time bound. There are many factors which involve uh, in an athlete returning to play. And I am sure my colleague, Mr. Patmanaman, will uh, tell in his talk how we bring them back to playing. The current techniques are 3D printing, which help us to uh, treat uh, new injuries and design new mechanics to manage uh, these kind of injuries. And also, if there are any changes in the articular surface because of an unstable knee, they can be picked up by special X-ray facilities uh, that can help us plan cartilage procedures to you know, halt the wear and tear of the knee in addition to treating cartilage and ACL injuries. I thank you all for your patient listening and uh, thank you, uh, um, St. Joseph's, for giving us an opportunity to speak to all of your team members. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you. The care and management of sports injuries is a critical aspect. Today, Dr. Rajkumar has enlightened us on this. Thank you, sir. It was truly a beneficial session for all of us. Thank Our you. second speaker for today is Dr. Padmanabhan Sekwin, MSE PT UK. He is a specialist in movement analysis for surgery, prevention, and sporting performance. A registered physiotherapist licensed to practice in the UK, Australia, and the UAE. He has chosen to work as the Chief of Rehabilitation Service at Sporto Sports Medicine at Sparsh Hospital, Bangalore. Dr. Padmanabhan Sekwin has over 20 years of clinical experience and has specialized in orthopedic rehabilitation and musculoskeletal injuries management from tertiary care hospital in India. This makes him an international resource person who has conducted over hundreds of workshops for physiotherapists and sports clinicians across all major cities in India and the UK, UAE, Malaysia, and Kuwait. Besides all this, Dr. Padmanabhan Sekwin is a published author of top-ranked international peer-reviewed publications, including the Journal of Orthoscopy, the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery, and the European Journal of Orthopedics and Sports Traumatology. Once again, a very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, thanks a lot, St. Joseph, for having us here so, on this special program and on our favorite subject, sports injuries. Uh, thank you, Rajkumar, sir. It's always a pleasure to work as a team and uh, a very comprehensive coverage of injury management and the favorite subjects which we kind of published together, um, the ACL and shoulder injuries. Thank you. Um, I'll get going. Essentially, I want to talk about uh, sports injuries, the prevention and the return to sport, um, well said as uh, the comeback. Uh, everybody recognizes a uh, guy on the screen and uh, what we don't realize is I just, when I was looking for this um, presentation, I looked at an old picture of him. Of course, he has got a nice haircut. Old picture of him where he is wearing a tape for his uh, elbow. So he has been carrying this elbow injury for quite some time. And eventually for him to win an Olympic medal, he has to get it operated and then rehabilitated. And then he got into a competitive performance. And this is the journey. Okay. So I want to take about many in you know, sports such as a javelin. Is it possible to prevent an elbow injury? In this case, an ulnar collateral ligament injury. If an unfortunate event that it does happen because of the nature the sport is uh, played, is it possible to get back to a competitive performance? And can surgery help you enhance this performance? So everything is answered with this. 
case study. Why do we have to prevent injuries? Why are we talking about preventing injuries? Is essentially because everybody wants to play a sport now. Sport is not necessarily an Olympic or a team sport. Everybody wants to participate in sport. You can see the number of people who have been doing cycling, a number of people who are involved in any kind of, um, you know, weekend sport, cricket, tennis, squash, based on their accessibility. General population, the participation is increasing. And of course, the performance demands are becoming higher and higher. That's an example. That's Zaltan Ebrahim, which, as you can see, that uh, he's there up because he has the ability to kick the football in unconventional ways, not in the ways usually taught as part of coaching. And the performance demands actually he has that kind of an ability. And humans, as a part of evolution, will move in specific ways, in fascinating ways, and they will move better. And that gives them over an edge. Okay. And does that predispose them to kind of injuries? 100% yes. We don't, we are just understanding the science behind how injuries happen, specific to somebody who's running, jumping and cutting. What about somebody trying to kick a football in air and somebody trying to kick a football without looking at it? So how do we prevent them? Of course, there is a huge cost for injuries, both in terms of management and the emotional cost uh, involved in it. Okay, that's essentially why we are talking about preventing injuries. But can we prevent injuries? How are, how are generally injuries prevent, prevented? Now, I used to say the best way to prevent a sport injury is not to play the sport at all. Okay, that, but this talk is not about that. We are not talk, going to talk about restricting from participating in sport. Of course, we talk about modifying the sport so that they can participate in a limited manner. Then that, that takes about the performance part of it and avoiding the sport together. Now, this used to be the conventional approach. It used to be the common sense approach. This everybody can do. But then as professionals, that's not what here we are here to talk. We are here to talk about the scientific approach by which we can prevent injuries and then put people back without restricting, avoiding, or modifying. How do we do it? How do we do it? Generally, we understand this. When we talk about preventing injuries, we are talking about three aspects. We can prevent injuries at three levels. One is we try and prevent the injuries from happening at all. So what we are calling it as preventing the first episode of injury. If the injury does happen, then how do we prevent it from happening again. For example, 50%, you know, that you can just close your eyes and then say that there is a 50% chance that the hamstring is going to get injured in the guy who has already had a first episode hamstring injury. How do we prevent this? And if the injuries do occur, how do we know that it doesn't become a recurrent problem? It doesn't become a disabling problem. That means how do we avoid a career threatening injury? How do you avoid an injury which doesn't, you know, stop you from doing normal activity? So how do you prevent a disability? Of course, if you Google, this is, this, you will find injury prevention interventions. These are the most common injury prevention interventions which are listed. Of course, there are a lot of controversies regarding the effectiveness. One thing that the research or the literature doesn't say is each one of these are effective if they are performed scientifically and then they are customized both to the demands of the sport and to the individual. For example, you don't prepare for a swimming by warming up, you know, doing a skipping as a warm up. So what are the injury prevention interventions that are available? I'll just quickly recap or read them basically. We know that there has to be an adequate warm up, an effective stretching program, optimal muscle strength and balance, which is usually done as part of the off season training. Equipment, sir covered it, your mouth guard, use of taping and bracing. You saw Mirit Chopra using a brace. An adequate and correct training, that's the skill part, correct biomechanics, that's the movement part where you have the ability to move 
quickly anticipate. We call it neuromuscular control. You also get injured if you don't adequately recover from your training session or your play session. And your nutrition, psychology, and lifestyle and habits, which includes sleep and then staying away from substances. So these are essentially the injury prevention interventions, which are which is which is very common. Everybody knows about them. There are controversies, there are questions, but we can answer them. But then they have a role and then they're not going anywhere. Essentially, these interventions fall into the category of preventing first episode. So everybody, everybody looks at the effectiveness of these interventions in the context of can they prevent the first episode and then come to a conclusion, none of them are effective. Okay. Why? Because the best way, as I told you before, the best way to prevent a sporting injury is not to play the sport. That's not, that's not complete. The completion of that sentence essentially is not to play the sport to the extent that is required and then not to play, play, play within the limitations of the human body. But then we want to keep pushing the limits and that's the essence, essence of a competitive sport. That's exactly why these interventions are not very effective. They, are, they, they will prevent the first episode, but then they don't actually stop the injuries from happening all over. So what do we do? What do we do? So instead of focusing on the first episode, which happens, as part of your regular participation in sport, we focus on the recurrence and preventing disability. Okay, that's where the institutions such as ours come into play. Of course, there is unfortunate, there is an injury that happened, but then with the right diagnosis, with the right intervention, we can make sure that it doesn't happen again. And then with the right intervention, we want to make sure that it never stops this guy from it doesn't, it's not a disabling injury, it stops you from playing this sport ever again. So that's where the concept of sport specific injury prevention comes in. So that's a generic injury, injury prevention where all your interventions are listed. Then comes your sport specific in, injury prevention, which essentially what we specialize in. Sir has already covered each sport has a very specific uh, pattern of injury. For example, a football, we want to understand what are the risk factors and what are the type of injuries that can present in a football. We have data on it. We have literature which says that hamstring and ACL injuries are very common in footballers. So we want to know what, what causes the hamstring and ACL injuries. And we know that any kind of training errors, which essentially is not necessary at a very high level. Nobody causes errors in terms of training, in terms of skill. But how do you program a training schedule? That's where the concept of periodization comes in, where you, you train through the season in such a way that there is a heavy part of training which involves jumping, landing, and strength training, heavy lifting, which comes well before the tournament. And skill-based training like you know dribbling, shooting comes just before the tournament. And then there is a recovery or off phase which comes after the tournament. All the coaches will agree. So if you come and if you stick to this scientific principles, then we minimize or mitigate the risk of injury. Then comes the other part, what we call as biomechanical errors. That's what we specialize in, looking at the way people move and then optimizing the way they move for a particular activity. In this case, kicking a football on your left foot involves you to land on the right foot, lean your trunk and generate force from the quadriceps at what we call as the lengthened position. Can we get this ability by just squatting? May not be. Okay, That's where Sir said about the lumbar pelvic concept, lumbar pelvic stability, and then the core and quadriceps integration. So this is what we call as the biomechanical errors and then biomechanical cause and preventing them. We call it sports specific rehab. It's an entire science in itself. Other factors are the environment, altitude, the competitiveness of the play, and then the age and demographics. Once the patient do get injured, we want to put them back. Of course, the final, um, you know, goal of an injury rehab is to basically put the patient back to whatever sport he is playing at whatever level he is playing. 
So the rehab should always align to this goal. So the initial phase, of course, we do symptom management and maintain the function of the rest of the limb and rest of the joints. Here, there is no sport. Intermediate level where you restore the function, predominantly focus on single joint mobility and strength, and then allow them to do what you call an isolated sport skill. So the isolated sport skill for an ankle injured can be you know, dribbling the ball or just raising the tapping the uh, ball for a shoulder serving or a throwing a teeth. Advance when they have adequate strength and stability and neuromuscular control. Then we allow them on sports specific skill, which involves cutting, pivoting, landing, jumping, or throwing based on what sport demands are. And of course, a return to sport is almost and always based on a criteria that's essentially passing specific kind of steps, tests, which are designed to simulate the demands of the sport. This is an entire science in itself. I'll give very few examples of how an each injury is different and then how you customize the rehab. We do what we call as customize the rehab. So customizing the rehab, what does it mean? You have to customize based on the tissue, a muscle, a tendon, a bone or a cartilage injuries. Each one behave differently to injury. Each one is managed differently to the injury. And what is the injury status? It does, did the injury happen at one time because of a trauma or it happened because of a biomechanical error where there is repetitive trauma or overuse? Because this will change the way you manage this injury. And the most important question is, what is the demand of this particular structure based on the sport? Who is the patient? Let us, let us have a look at it. So imagine that hamstring injury in a cricketer. He is injured and then we take him for a rehab between second and third week where the tissue is starting to heal. And we start planning the rehab in such a way that he's a cricketer. What are the adaptation or what are the demands of a cricketer? The demands of the cricketer are different based on what he's trying to do. For example, all the cricketers need to run irrespective of whether they are bowler, batsman or fielder, they have to run. So primarily, we have to make sure that he's able to run after a hamstring injury. If he's a bowler and if it is a lead leg, then he has to land. If he's a fast bowler, he has to land at a very high space. Now, while running places a specific demand on the hamstring and landing, landing places a very high demand on them. It's the same structure, same injury, but the rehab and progression will be different. If he's a batsman, he has to lunge to play forward to the wicket or he has to pivot to you know, um, play on either side of the wicket. So if I have a hamstring injured athlete, a cricketer and a batsman, I am more focusing on getting him to lunge and pivot, which is an easy skill to adapt and run and then focus on running between the wickets. So I can put him back to sport a little faster. But if he is a fast bowler for the same kind of injury, he has to land. And if it is on the leading leg, then that because of the demands of the sport and demands on the structure, the return to sport will be a little delayed. So this is how we customize. Just a simple example. Every sport has got confidence based on the demand and it can be customized. And that's the formula for one tissue. When we talk about putting people back to sport, we used to assume that if they spent a particular time, say for example, seven months, eight months, now it is 11 months, they can automatically go back to sport. Or if they show that they are able to jump, land, or show a specific strength, and there is no pain, they can go back to sport. Now that the concept has changed. Now we follow what we call as the continuum model. So where the return to sport, especially of a competitive athlete, is managed in this way. So it's managed at three stages where we look at in returning the patient to participation, then the sport, then to performance. Let us see what it means. Sir spoke about the ACL injury. How do we plan this? So return to participation is the ability to demonstrate the skills that are required for the sport. For example, if you want to participate in say football, then you have to show that you're able to run and you're able to run fast 
and then you are able to run for throughout the game so that is that only entitles you to participate in the sport then return to sport is essentially you are able to do the skills such as dribbling cutting pivoting and running to the next step that is required for you to get into the team that means you have to pass certain fitness assessment maybe the yo yo test the beat test the shuttle runs so that you can get into the team and for you to stay in the team you don't want to be the weak link in the team you want to play consecutive matches you want to play the second hour you want to play the extra time and you want to give the assist you want to be you don't want to be the weak link and you want to score the winning goal and that's when you can get back as you can see the demands for a particular sport after an injury for a competitive sport will vary and as the level of play is increased then it is much more challenging to put the patient back so return to sport is not just about achieving physical or time based goals it is achieving the demand based goals that's essentially what we follow this is operated by sir dr ashkuma 21 year old college footballer seven months post ankle reconstruction surgery okay this is to show that it is possible to put the back so the continuum model he is on the return to sport essentially what what do you think is a normal uh, ankle sprain this patient had repetitive ankle sprain and we know that for a person of this age if he wants to stay competitive he can't have a weak link of the ankle dislocating or subluxing or being unstable multiple times and it can't be uh, helped with rehab it can't be helped with bracing and if it happens repeatedly it can cause a cartilage injury so informed decision scientific decision it needs to be operated the fear after operation can i play answer yes he can so that's one aspect where we train him to kick the football on the operated leg on the operated foot for a specific distance we'll plan to kick on every direction that is possible in wall cutting and pivoting and in contact and then we put him back so that's that's essentially how we put a patient back after surgery that's sir's patient to summarize injury prevention is about understanding whether you want to prevent the first episode the recurrence or the disability the first episode is about understanding the demands it's an art the recurrence and disability is a science it requires a scientific approach specific sport specific injury management injuries are managed as a team approach as you can see we work as a team and return to performance is about matching the injury to the demands of the sport whatever is the demand can put them back thank you and to we'll answer questions thank you dr rajkumar and dr padmanabhan for that informative and interesting session the inputs on how one can optimize basic fitness and focus on safe play will definitely be beneficial to our young athlete preventing a sporting injury by following a healthy lifestyle and making sure athletes follow an effective warm up and are aware of the correct techniques of the sport they choose thank you for your inputs once again the floor is now open for questions we have a few questions raised by students and parents i request ms dipali and ms mamta to moderate the q and a session a very good evening to all our viewers dr rajkumar and dr padmanabhan you have explained sports injuries and their remedies in such a comprehensive yet simple manner however we have a number of interesting questions which we have received in advance from our young athletes doctors since we are running short of time we would request you to answer briefly so that we can ask as many questions as possible my first question is addressed to dr rajkumar we all know that warming up is important in sports 
what are the consequences of improper warming up? It's a good question. Um, if I had to give you an example, we all like Hamara Bajaj scooter. That is the best example of a warm up. It doesn't start unless we, you know, warm the vehicle quite a bit. If you don't do that, the vehicle won't start. Similar way, all the muscles are in a resting phase when uh, they are about to move or about to play a game. More injuries are seen when the muscles are about to start functioning or when they are ending a particular function. So it is important to maintain a good tone and a good length of the muscle fiber by stretching and warming up to avoid injuries, which is the best way. As your principal rightly put it, prevention is always better than cure. So always warm up early to prevent injuries which can you know, damage a sporting career. Thank you, doctor. My next question to you is, what are your views on the dietary intake, intakes pre and post match for an athlete? You want me to answer? Or, uh, yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Rajkumar. Okay, great. Um, a balanced and a healthy diet should be maintained by any athlete. Having said that, professional help nowadays are available in this area also. And they need to, you know, find time to sit and discuss with them what is good for a particular individual and for a particular game. Not all supplements are good for a particular individual or a particular age group. They need to seek proper nutritional advice in having the right kind of a balanced diet to optimize their uh, sporting activity, be it a cricketer, as Padmanabhan uh, said, or be it a football player. All of them will require different kind of a diet or if it is an endurance runner, they all require different kind of diet to maintain a lean body mass. So in such a situation, they need a specialist to help them to choose what is the best uh, diet to play a particular sport. Not all, it, it is not that it's, uh, it's not like, you know, one kind of fix for uh, every uh, problem. There are different uh, uh, pieces that have to be put together when a diet is being prescribed for an athlete who practices different sport. Thank you, Dr. Rajkumar, for those precious inputs. I uh, over to Mamta, Miss Mamta. She is going to address her questions to Dr. Panmanabhan. Thank you, Ms. Dipali. A very good evening to all the viewers. Dr. Padmanabhan, my first question for you is, how important is managing one's weight related to issues of knee and ankle pain or injuries? Okay, um, it depends on the demands on the knee, uh, functional demands, each sport, especially the jumping and landing sport. If you are, if you are asking about, and every sport involves running, so we'll talk about running. So running places, uh, for example, running places um, scientifically eight times your body weight for every single step that you take. Uh, there is eight times your body weight force on the front of the knee. So obviously, if you take one kilo off, you're taking eight kilos off from the knee for every single step you take. Now, if you are optimal weight, then you can uh, improve your running performance. If you're non-optimal weight, then the running performance will be limited by the load that you can place and any structure irrespective of uh, how much weight, how much stronger you, uh, you are, there is a threshold and the threshold is it can take eight times your body weight. So if you take one kilo off, then you are taking eight, eight kilos. So if you are at optimal level, it is good. If you are overweight, then it is recommended that you take the weight off. This is for running. Thank you, doctor. My next question for you is, does biomechanics help an athlete in enhancing his performance and reducing the risk of injuries? 
yeah that's my specialty area yes okay. sir uh, so uh, of course yes uh, biomechanics is the way uh, humans optimize movement for a required um, you know demand on their body biomechanics involves you not just controlling your movement it's also controlling the movement and achieving a target it may be placing the ball in the right place placing your body in relation to the ball for example if you want to jump and do a heading and then direct it to a specific direction so if you are not able to do this because of uh, problems related to the control of your body the control may be the joint movements which can necessarily be how your shoulder is placed in relation to your elbow or how you are placing your entire body in relation to the sport meaning in relation to the object that is coming at you okay your ball and how you are going to land when you are jumped in air in relation to the surface so if you have general awareness and ability to control your body parts in relation to the movement demands in relation to the space demands in relation to the sport and then if you are able to do that quickly and better than everyone then you are going to be injury free and of course that will translate into better performance so biomechanics is the core of injury prevention and human movement yes doctor my last question for you is in spite of sufficient rest warm up exercises stretching drinking adequate water and taking proper medication problems of hamstring still aggravates while playing football yeah okay um yes, as we said the, now the science understands that your hydration and the stretching is not adequate for the demands this is what we call again and again about the, it's not about the tissue it's not about the per person the demands on the hamstrings are different sir open the slide first with eccentric overload of the muscle so hamstring when we do common exercises and when we do normal functions hamstring works in a certain way it's called as concentric action of the hamstring but in a football it does what we call eccentric lengthening that means it has to lengthen but it has to also produce force and it has to produce quickly when you have to either kick a ball or you have to stop to cut and change direction okay so so in addition to whatever interventions you just mentioned there is one specific intervention which is called as a hamstring nordic curl which is performed at all elite level uh, football it is shown to reduce hamstring injuries by 54% in elite uh, athletes so the interventions as as the problem statement whatever you told and then we are trying to find a solution and the solution seems to be uh, adding eccentric or what we call as nordic hamstring curl uh, to a standard warm up or a sport specific warm up for football that's how we minimize the injury so so it's because of the demands thank you doctor thank you so much with this we come to the end of our question answer session thank you dr rajkumar and dr padmanavan this indeed has been a very valuable and informative session i am sure that all the viewers will be benefited by the wisdom imparted by our eminent speakers thank you sirs thank you. thank you teachers thank you dr rajkumar and dr padmanavan for answering all the questions so patiently it has been an enthralling discussion and we would have liked to continue however we are bound by time i quote gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul unquote by henry ward i invite dr santosh adam to propose the vote of thanks gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues but the parent of all it gives me immense pleasure to deliver the word of thanks today on behalf of our principal and the management of st joseph's boys high school i would like to express sincere gratitude to our speakers dr rajkumar amravati and dr padmanabhan 
for giving us their precious time and having shared their valuable experience and insights on sports injuries, care and management. Thank you, Dr. Rajkumar and Dr. Padmanabhan. I would also like to thank our principal, Reverend Father Sunil Fernandez, for motivating us as always. Thank you, dear Father, for your constant encouragement and support. A special word of gratitude to our primary administrator, Father Vishal de Souza, our vice principal, Mr. Uday Kumar, who have always supported us in every venture. Grateful thanks to all the teachers and our technical team who have worked to ensure the success of this program. To be specific, Mr. Roshan, Mr. Miraju, Mr. Rajesh. I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to all the parents, students, well-wishers, and participants for having joined us today through this online platform. We thank you for your unfailing support and hope that you have stood to gain from this program. In the words of Michael Jordan, never say never because limits like fears are often just an illusion. Thank you.